Steve, August Fall to Gadi Q and Animiasa Le Bite Size Irish. So hello everyone. Welcome to our monthly live QA, our first one of the year of 2022. Do you go it, Neil? Yeah, Tamagamai, Tamagamai, Gramagits. Um JD Katina, nice to meet you all. Yes, so Neil joins us here. The first time Neil comes on our QA. Um, well, nice start to the year. So Neil joined our team. When did you join? What in month? August, me Lunasa, I think. That long already, yeah. So Neil joined us in August, but we've only roped him into our Q&A um, this month. So we have a special one for you all this month, and it will be on, uh, well, we'll focus on Gaelga Ola. So Neil, I suppose we could start off, you could just tell the audience a little bit about yourself not too much but just so we know your background <laughs> um okay mission neil is as chiro and me um so i'm from county tyrone originally um bali derbanyam illan and rural illan and rural so coal island in east county tyrone um but i did my studies in dublin i studied irish and old irish in ucd and folklore as well and then i lived in london for years and now i'm back in dublin again working with Irish. So Go home talk. So we have an expert on our hands here and we have plenty of questions that came in over the last couple of weeks for Neil. So I'm super excited to hear more. I learn a lot myself. Um, I'm no expert at all in Gael Gaola. I don't know many people from um, from up north. So I'm quite happy to be here with you, uh, Neil. So I suppose we'll jump straight into it. We have plenty of questions here and as usual if anyone has any extra questions that they think of on the spot you are more than welcome to bring them into the live chat so on Heath Keown the first question comes in from Connor and Connor is in Derry and he starts off nice and easy a lovely simple question which is how do you say good luck in Ulster Irish so I'll pass that to you Neil is there a certain way to say it in Ulster Irish or maybe just the way you pronounce it? We might have a different way. I'm not sure. Um, again, as, as as much as you say you're not so familiar with Ulster Irish, I'm I'm still learning about Connacht and, and Munster Irish. But mm -hmm. I, I feel like people in other dialects tend to use Ganeri Lat very often. True. True, yeah. But the one I would always use and the one which does um, have the word luck in it is Amor Ort. Amor art. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, uh, ah being luck and, and more being great or big. So, amor art. And um, I heard that one just uh, the other night, in fact, on the TG Cahir show on Coast to Here, where okay. a Donegal woman, Annie Freshland, is traveling around Ireland, but she's starting up in Donegal. And um, she or somebody was wishing good luck, and they said, amor art. Amor Earth. Yeah, I've never I've never heard the earth myself. Oh more I've heard. Um but yeah, all more earth. Gahuntoch, yeah. So all more earth or Gnairi Lat, um, as I've heard before, but specifically um Ulster Irish, we would probably go for all more earth. So Gahuntoch. And I suppose maybe the first thing about Ulster Irish there is that you would say all, oh, but for us it's ah. Ah. Yeah. So the ah fada. Is, is quite different. The letter A is quite different in Ulster. So, yeah, especially um, Munster. We love to draw. We love to draw out our fathers really, really long, really, really long, and really aw, aw. So, yeah, Kahinta. Yeah. So the second one um, comes in from James Mulligan in Orlando, in Florida. So, Gramahagot, James. Uh, is there a difference between in tone and or meaning between is Muntorme? Muntor atá onam and Muntor isha me. Okay, so this is a grammar question, not specifically Ulster Irish, but maybe you'll have a, an opinion, Neil. I couldn't think of a difference between them all, to be honest. I find personally they're quite interchangeable. Is Muntor me, Muntor atá onam, and Muntor isha me. Um, Maybe you could argue that Muntor Atá Anam and Muntor Shame puts more emphasis on the fact that it's the teacher that you are rather than Is Muntor Me. You're putting more emphasis maybe on you. I don't know. I feel, I don't think there's much of a difference. Karachiatan Tusa. 
Ain't them lads. Uh, I I agree. They're pretty much the same, I think. And if anything, the the, the second two, maybe maybe they're fronting the word Munch or bringing it to the start. So a little mm-hmm. bit of focus, but they're pretty much the same. And they're all general too. They're all saying I am a teacher rather than the teacher or something more specific. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're pretty safe using any of those, James, interchangeably. Um, none are more, you know anything than the other so yeah shin shin so um if we're at three then the third question is uh from frank is san diego and frank says hi emma and niall how different is ulster irish from let's say the irish spoken in cork would they be able to understand one another is it like here in the States? People in the southern states speak English, but with an accent and a different slang terms for words. Gurv Mahabuth. So, well, I don't know. We can understand each other pretty okay, Neil. So, I don't you In know. English as well as in Irish, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shin shin. <laughs> yeah. But that's just, it, there are different dialects, but for people who are fluent, it's, it's easy enough to understand. So, it's exactly like English in that way, I would say. Um, uh occasionally someone in a different part of the world has a word that you don't quite get or pronunciation that's a little different but by and large you can understand them um there are differences between the dialects of course um sometimes it's just pronunciation like amor and amor we just mentioned sometimes it's a little bit of grammar sometimes it's vocabulary of course we might use a different word for the for the same thing um, but especially these days, we have access to all these amazing resources. It's not like we're stuck on our little island and we don't have an opportunity to hear people from other parts of um, the country. So, um, yeah, I think that, does that answer it? I think so. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'd agree with you as well. I think it depends where you are as well in a language you know when you start learning a language you might not even be able to tell the difference between the dialects it any it does not even just irish you know i'm i'm still learning german for however many years now and i still can't you know differentiate between some dialects but also if i hear a word from a certain dialect i might not have the word in my own vocabulary it doesn't go to say that i don't understand them there might be some um you know confusion at some point but it's all about um getting experience and opening your ears really and um especially now as neil said you know online radio even tg Kahar, there's a nice mix of um speakers on there to at least get you used to it you might not be um absolutely able to understand every single word that is dialectically um special to whatever dialect you know but you get there with um, experience, I think. And, and I, I think it's it's worth remembering too that there were sort of two levels to this because number one, we need to understand people if we hear people, but that doesn't mean that that's how you have to speak every time mm-hmm. when you're producing mm-hmm. the language yourself. You can choose your dialect and, and be clear about that, but you, we still need to understand everyone else who's speaking and you, yeah, over time, a bit of practice, you get used to it and there are certain little tricks and uh, trends and, and habits that um, you become familiar with and you start to pick up on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. In theme lat. So when you're starting, it might be a little bit more difficult, but with time, you get the hang of it and your ear gets trained, so to say. Um, Kerkalor, so on Hed Kesht Ella comes in from Eddie in Montana. And Eddie asks a question in relation to Bite Size itself. So perhaps Eddie, you're thinking about signing up for Bite Size in one of our courses, maybe even our taster course, something like that. But Eddie wants to know what form of Irish am I going to learn? Gaelic, Scottish, or um, Irish? So Slánche, so Gurmíl Mahagod Eddie. Um, yeah, so what, what kind of Irish am I going to learn? Well, well, I'll leave you answers, um, maybe, Neil. Um, there's a little bit of confusion sometimes about terminology because pe- people might use different terms in different places. So 
because sometimes people are a bit confused about what's the difference between Irish and Gaelic and Scottish and Scottish Gaelic and so on. Um, there are three Gaelic languages, in fact, Irish Gaelic, Scottish Gaelic and Manx Gaelic. In Ireland, we just say Irish to talk about our language. But outside Ireland, people tend to use Gaelic a lot, especially in Britain, I think, because over in Scotland, they speak English, but they also have Scottish Gaelic and they have Scots as well. So it's, it's quite confusing. Scots is related to English. It, it, feels, it looks like a form of English, really. But it mm -hmm. is considered a different language to English. So they've got Scots and Scots Gaelic. So I think in Scotland they tend to use, and in Britain they tend to use Gaelic to really distinguish those two. And then people say Irish. What is Irish? Isn't it Gaelic? And the answer is, yes, it is Gaelic. But we tend to say Irish all the time. So that's the three Gaelic languages, Irish Gaelic, Scottish Gaelic, and Manx Gaelic from the Isle of Man. And of course, in bite-sized Irish, we, we teach, we study Irish Gaelic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect answer. Yeah, I couldn't say anything extra to that. Um, yeah, so bite-sized Irish, you will learn Irish that is spoken on the island of Ireland. So um, yeah, if you're thinking about it, we'll have all of the links uh, available in the bio and also the blog post after this live. So if anyone is thinking about um, even trying us out, we have a lovely taster course um, for anyone that wants to try a free trial of our courses. Kert Galur, so Kisht a Kuig on Sun. Maybe I'll pass the mic to you, Neil. You could read sure. out next. Um, so we have a question here from Janine in Seattle, and she says, I would love to find a good resource for listening to Ulster Irish on a regular basis, perhaps a radio station. I stumbled on a few, but was disappointed by the frequent use of English interjections, you know, so like, can you recommend something for me? Um, sure, Ginny. Um, the first thing I suppose is that those little English interjections are pretty common a lot of the time, unless it's something that's quite prepared. Um, if it's something off the cuff, like a radio broadcast, you will hear a little bit of that. Um, but maybe there are cases, maybe there are presenters or shows where there's 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 less of it. And uh, but I I I know how you feel about that when you hear it. Um, so of course there are the radio stations. Radio Nagel Tukta um, is the Irish language radio station from RTE, and they have various presenters from all the different Gael Tukts, but including um, Ulster Donegal Gael Tukt. And one of the famous presenters there is, is Anya Nifreshlin from Kidor, and she has a show called Blaira that's very good. And she also is involved with this podcast, Pio Regan. And Pio Regan is is great podcast for uh, for getting used to different dialects as well, because there's one woman from Kidor in Donegal, there's uh, Sinead Niulachan from uh, Cork Arena, so outside Dingle in Kerry, the real Kerry Irish. And there's also a woman from County Louth, Sean Nikon. So the three of them have different dialects and they're just chatting and very natural altogether and very entertaining. It's not really ideal for beginners, but it is a great thing. Even if you don't get every word, you can leave it on and get used to the sounds and so on, see what you can pick out. Um, there's also uh, BBC Radio Ulster, so broadcasting from Belfast, and there's Radio Falcha is also based in Belfast. And um, there are a few other podcasts too, and one of the ones that I know has been mentioned before in the Q&A, but the, the Newark Dwell podcast that I myself am involved in. Um, in Newark Dwell, we have three presenters from Ulster. There is a woman from County Down, there's myself from County Tyrone, and uh, also a woman from Donegal. So you could just pick out those episodes. They're all labeled nice and clear and and use those as your Ulster Irish references. Yeah, super, super. Yeah, Nook, while we have sang your praises, Neil, before you were even part of the team, we were big fans <laughs> here. 
<laughs> so um yeah new foul is great because it's it's um slow news and read nice and clear and slow and also you provide the transcripts also so you can really match the sounds and words together when you are listening so all of those um i will have links in the blog post but um as neil said radio fault um, um bbc radio ulla and of course, uh, the trusty Radio Nagoil Tachta as well. So I'm sure you'll find something that would um, appeal to you, Janine, but maybe you'll have to do a little bit of digging and listening until you find something that you find suitable to your level and that you also enjoy listening to. Kerka Lohr, um, so, on Kate Kesh to Ella and Son. Sure. Um, so, this is uh, another question from Janine, actually, um, more of a resource question, she says. She'd like to find a map with the place names in Northern Ireland in Irish. So I'm not aware specifically of, of one map. It might be out there, could easily be out there. Um, but in terms of place names in Northern Ireland or in the rest of Ireland, the best resources really are loganyam.ie and ni place names. Dot org. Um, they uh, provide a lot of information about place names, um, the English and Irish forms and historical forms and where they are, right down to little little villages and townlands, as well as counties and, 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 and towns and cities and so on. So um, they're fantastic resources. But for a map that you want to put on your wall, um, I do know one artist from Derry who goes by the name of, um, his name is Tom, but uh, he he puts his work out under the name Bjoy, which is almost like to animate, to make something alive. And um, he's got maps of County Derry and County Donegal and Derry City as well. Lovely picture of Derry City, all with the Irish language names in there. And he also has a map of the islands. It's very interesting. It's It shows... Ireland and Britain, and even Brittany down in France. And it's the names of most of the places in all the Celtic languages. So there's not too much focus on the English part, but um, it's mostly about Brittany, Cornwall, Wales, Scotland, the Isle of Man, of course, and, and Ireland indeed. And you've got various different Celtic languages. Before I mentioned the three, Gel the three Gaelic languages, um, Irish, Scottish, Gaelic, and Manx, but there's also three um, Brythonic languages, three British Celtic languages, which is uh, Welsh, of course, in Wales, Cornish in Cornwall, and Breton down in Brittany, France. So that's a lovely map and a nice thing to hang on the wall. Um, there may be other people who are producing maps of Ulster or Northern Ireland, specifically in Irish, but um, I haven't found those exactly yet. Yeah, I was actually going to, um, when I saw this question, Tom uh, popped to mind as well. I think his stuff is really, really, really nice. And I was actually going to buy that map of the islands. It's on the plan to do. Um, I will eventually. I wanted to buy it for my my office in in uh, Germany here because obviously we come in contact with, uh, we do Welsh and also then uh, we have some Scottish Gaelic and uh, some Breton speakers in my department so wow. it's a really really lovely map to have all together yeah it's fab so yeah if you're looking just for the resources log Adam, I, I wasn't aware of ni place names.org that's great so um log Adam is brilliant and you can even get down to um they have a new project um Me mehil uh, log Adam, where you can I, I, for example, could enter local place names right down to a field that is near my house and I could actually give you the name of it if I had, if there was a certain name and a certain story attached to it. They allow um, entries from the public as well now, which is, I, I think, a great, a great thing because, you know, a lot of people, there'd be a road just in this little town, maybe a stretch of road that is named after someone who did something in the town in whatever year and that then is um, now being mapped. So... Loganum is excellent and it's available. It gives you all the names in Irish and in English and oftentimes the meaning of them in Irish are certainly a part of the meaning and um, also pronunciation um, recordings, if not all, but a lot of the time it's there. 
Ja, klar, Grund doch, Grund doch, Grund doch. Um, okay, so yeah. I'm here, here, Stella. Um, next question is from Adrian in Armagh, and he says, "Is there a list of Irish words and English translations that are only used in Ole? So only Ulster Irish um, a, a list. Uh, there are resources out there, of course. Um, um, I'm sure there are books published on the topic, and and of course, if you uh if, if, if you're buying any literature any any poetry or prose from 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 donegal specifically you'll get that experience um in terms of a handy list so that you know you are you can you can just deploy some real ulster irish vocabulary a really handy resource is is the wikipedia page for ulster irish um it's got a great list of words that, that we tend to use and if you, you know, pepper your speaking with those words, you'll sound like an Ulster speaker. So it's a great, great little list. It's not comprehensive, of course, because it's just a Wikipedia page, but it's a great resource. So that's the Wikipedia page for Ulster Irish. Great, yeah, I link that in, in the blog. A lot of people try and avoid um, Wikipedia when they're looking for, you know, there's kind of a thing, oh, it's not, it's only put together by, laymen or so to say you know but oftentimes wikipedia can be quite good for collections of words like that i found a couple um of pages of just i don't know vocab lists that are just specific to even a topic and um they're quite good so yeah good old wikipedia sometimes really helps you yeah. out yeah Kierkelor, so i'll move on to the next question um the next question comes in from Kate, Kate in County Down. Uh, and Kate says, I'm a new learner of Gaelga Ulla. Uh, sadly, growing up near Belfast, it was too dangerous to speak, except for a very few areas. I wanted to ask why we don't see our dialect represented more. When I see articles about Irish or about pronunciation, it's usually the other dialects how can we help promote Gaelga Ulla, not just in Ireland, but around the world? I feel like our dialect faces the most challenges as it's a seed that needs extra water. To you and Dia Yiv to all the Gaelgori out there, regardless of dialect. Um, P.S. I just sat and passed my Cúpla Fóckel in December and I'm so thrilled. Learning Irish is fantastic and I urge anyone listening to get involved. Kate. Great question. And um I'm I I agree. I you Ulster Irish gets a, a bad rap sometimes just because people think, first of all, it's too difficult, maybe, or because they don't hear it as often. Simple as is sometimes. Oh, are well, maybe, maybe I'd like to ask you about that because when I first came to Dublin for university, I I I, I first met this attitude, and people seem to think that. They seem to have a, a bit of stress when you mention Ulster Irish, and they 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 don't don't quite like it. And I think maybe it ties in with the leaving cert experiences when you have to do a school exam. Would that be right? Do you remember that sort of feeling? See, I have a biased opinion because I went my primary school was in Irish, so I didn't have the fear of Irish in general. A lot of people would start off with a general fear of Irish for exams, you know, especially people who have gone through their primary and secondary schooling in English and they all of a sudden have to sit down and do a listening exam um, in Irish and the first hurdle that you get to um, is understanding what's going on in your own dialect and then you kind of have to battle with Connacht which was always fine you know it's kind of you there's only a couple of but then I remember the fear of 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 Gael Gaola and I had one teacher in primary school she was from down and uh, that was quite funny because we, when she came and taught us in second class, I think it was, <laughs> we all as kids had our Munster Irish from teachers from on Rhine and all of that. And then all of a sudden she taught us certain words and she pronounced things. And as a child, you're learning how to speak and how to learning things. We developed a slight, um, you know, accent with certain words so I remember I, we had um the word down the color brown d-o-n-n -N, and she called it done mm -hmm. yeah and nice I would have said down so we it was actually the you know they put in primary school you have different tables and the colors are assigned to the tables so on board done I guess on board Derek so we all started saying done and there were certain other couple of words that would be thrown in but 
you know, and then we moved on to third class and we had a teacher from Munster again. And she thought, what's going on? Why are you all saying done? It's down, you know? So I was aware of the difference there, right? But it never really caused difficulty. But I think when you get there, it's not, when you get to the, the exam and you're listening to it, it's oftentimes not even the language or what's being said. It's often that in Northern Ireland, I find that it's, you can, well, depending on the person, I'm not going to group you all, Neil, but you're a bit more melodic when you speak. It's a bit more up and down. Not as melodic as people from Cork, but I feel like you kind of, it's, so oftentimes it's the intonation, for me anyway, and the stress on where, what part of the word the stress is put on. Maybe yes. that adds to the, the melody that I'm hearing or that I want. Now I'm more used to it, you know. But still, um, I remember at the start, it wasn't what was being said. The words weren't difficult. It was more so the the melody and sometimes the speech. I think I, think I would say the rhythm is a little bit different yeah. because, of, because of the stress, like you, you, you just mentioned there. Um, and naturally, Ulster and Munster, because they're the farthest apart geographically, they're the farthest apart linguistically mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had this attitude even from my own darling mother, who's from County Galway and insists that every way we speak Irish is completely wrong. So um, <laughs> that attitude is out there, Kate. Um, but but really, not amongst Gaelgores, not amongst real Irish speakers. It's It's a few people who complain about their school experiences, and we get that a lot people complain about their school experiences and just I guess school was not that much fun in the 70s when people were allowed to beat kids and so on. Um, also there are a few, few particular things uh, in Ulster as we all know um, the political situation and even now we don't we haven't quite secured um, full legal status for the Irish language in Northern Ireland so our, our our friends in Wales and Scotland, they have legal status for their languages there, of course, but in Northern Ireland, in that part of the UK, uh, there is not, and there's a lot of resistance in some places, as we all know about, I'm sure. So it's been a little bit the unloved uh, sibling of the three dialects in Irish, I would say. Um, and also another, another reason for that is that, as I see it, there are quite a lot of similarities between Connacht and Munster Irish. So the first thing we mentioned tonight was that pronunciation of Afada. But in, in Connacht and Munster both, that would be O, oh, whereas in, in, in Donegal that's A. Ah. So some linguistic reasons, some political, cultural reasons and so on. But um, I'm with you, Kate. I think we need to uh, promote our, our version of Irish too, because it's just as authentic as any other. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I was trying to think, yeah, like, I think I found that I never really had any problem with Ulster Irish, even in school. I was trying to think um, where I got, even got the idea from. It was just off other other kids and other students that would say, oh, Ulster Irish. I used to think, okay, well, there must be something going on here. But it was more so that they just didn't like Irish in general, I don't think, yeah. you know. And yeah. one big difference, one thing that unlocked Munster Irish for me a little bit was when mm -hmm. I realized about the stress. So when, in Ulster Irish, the rule is we put the stress on the first syllable of the word. The beginning of the word is the strongest part of the word. But it seems to me that in, in Munster Irish, you put the stress on the syllable which has a fada, a sheen of fada. So in a word like um, if we talk about a girl, Marhampla, um, C R I L I Fada N. Um, I would say Kalyin. Kalyin. And the Kal is still very strong and the Yin is quite weak, really. Kalyin. Well, how would you say that, uh, Emma? Kalyin. Kalyin. So yeah. Kalin. it's just the other direction, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you tune into that, then it makes a lot of words more clear for you. Yeah. What about, because um, I found this actually when I first started, when I um, started my job here, the previous lecturer, the previous uh, professor that taught the class before me was from Donegal. And then the students in their second semester got someone from Munster, me. So there was a big, um, I noticed a lot of difference, differences that I hadn't really noticed before, because even in my college days, I didn't know many people from um you know, the north of Ireland because who would be coming down from Donegal to Cork 
to study. You know, there's plenty of colleges in between. <laughs> you, know? Right. Yeah. you know, so um, yeah, I noticed it more so with my own uh, students here. So what about this uh, this word? Because I see someone in the comments asking for some examples. Um, uh, how would you pronounce that one, uh, Neil? Denier. Denier, yeah. I'd say Dinair yeah. or Dinair even in my, in with a ring, um, yeah. with the ring Irish eye. So Dinair, Dinair uh, and then and We Dinair. sometimes disregard the fada altogether, especially if it's on that second syllable. It won't be so clear in mm -hmm. Ulster Irish. Mm -hmm. But to anyone listening, I'm sure if you look at that word and I say Dinair, and Neil says, Jinnair, yeah. we can still understand each other. You know, it's not so much of, it's like tomato, tomato, you know. Uh, it's not um, something that would cause major confusion. Um, could cause, I don't know, I don't think anyone really is having the argument anymore of which one is the better one to say, um, other than, well, real, real, real speakers of Irish don't really care at this point, I don't think. Yeah. Um, it's more so the people that are learning and who have a favourite, um but yeah so Jinair versus Jinair and Colleen versus Colleen I suppose it's it's a bit like sometimes they say a little information is dangerous and it's people <laughs> who have a little information about Irish who assume that no it has to be Jinair that's what it is <laughs> and it's it's not it's never so hard and fast as that and no um, languages languages there's no yeah. set rule there's always there's always differences it's like in anything i'm sure you could find a hundred thousand words in english that you pronounce one way and someone else pronounces another way and neither are wrong so go on though yeah so more well now that we have nail on the team we've more justice for um and this i'm sure won't be the only um the only q and a you will do with us nail so um there'll be plenty more conversations of the like um Kirkalur. so the next question actually is from kate as well and kate asks well says first of all i have always dreamed of visiting the donegal gael Tacht, but just with my bunrong gaelga or my basic gaelga for anyone uh it feels very intimidating what advice would you give to novices wanting to do their first Gaeltacht stay? What should we expect? And what are the do's and don'ts? Skurv Mila Mahabev. Well, on Rev Tariyev, um, well, I'm sure you were, but have you ever spent time in the Donegal Gaeltacht? Have you done a Gaeltacht trip? Of course, yeah. It's as much mm -hmm. a part of our school days. Um, when I was at school, we went to Loch and Ewer, uh, in the Rosses in Donegal, um, several summers in a row and it was just fantastic it was amazing uh experiences really um and just a couple of years ago when i was living in london involved with the irish community there we took a trip um to glan um in southwest donegal and uh, that was a great weekend it was about 12 of us going over it was like wacky races all in different nice. cars and airports so it was great fun all together and great for people to get into an, an environment where Irish is all around you, more immersive, as they say. Um, so, yeah, specifically about Donegal, Kate, um, yeah, Igiscale run courses in Glan Chalm Kille, and uh, they're great. Um, of course, things have been a little bit online in the last couple of years, but I, I, I'm not sure what they have in terms of in the location this year, but I'm I'll sure interject. They, they do. They were actually the yeah. only Gael Tuft last summer to run um, to run live. Well, maybe not it's the only one, but the only one I could find because my mm -hmm. students, I send them. I, I said they like to go. We send two to the Gael Tuft every year, and they want to, of course, go to the a monster Gael Tuft for me. Um, but all of them ended up uh, in Idris Gael, and they had a ball. So I'm pretty mm. sure they'll be able to run it. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. But uh, that's just it. There, there are usually more options as well than that. That's that's one that I know. Um, so there are classes for for adults, and I know that they just scale of classes in in art and music and even archaeology because there's a lot of history in that in that area. Um, but there are other uh, places all around uh, Gael Tucked, um which have classes for courses for adults. So look them up. Um, and the great thing about that is that um, a Gael Tuck course like that, it, it's a safe space, so you don't have to be too 
nervous about being a learner because everybody's a learner or a teacher around you and and if you go into the village or into the shop or the pub and you try out your Irish it's a safe space uh, if you're more of a beginner think about what you can express and what you can do so you know how to say hello maybe um you you're gonna what will you need like um most important phrase in any language thank you you know uh hello how are you thank you can i have a cup of tea can i have a pint of guinness whatever it is um work you know focus on those basics first if you're very comfortable with that you can push the boat out a little bit and add some more little phrases in that you've learned um but the great thing is when people are speaking Irish around you all day, you practice without even knowing it because you're hearing it all the time. So it's really so much better than just an, an hour a week in your Irish class, which is very valuable too. But when you've got it around you 24 hours a day, it's it's fantastic. So definitely do it, Kate, and definitely do it, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think, uh, yeah, so Emma, I'm sure you've got... Any, you've got some advice too for people who are trying to be interested to go to the Gaelic Talk? What would you say to them? Yeah, well, I agree with everything you said. And I just think the main thing that you need to be is open minded and willing and, you know, really be willing to make mistakes because people, that's half the battle is opening your mouth and get, getting words out of your mouth. It may not be right. It might it may not be 100% right. You might have the words, but maybe you don't grammatically put this, the sentence together you still probably will be understood and you might get even get corrected, you know, even if, well, you would buy a teacher, of course, but if you tried in a pub or in a, in a, in a cafe or in a shop in any of these areas around the Gwaeltoch, if the person can speak Irish, um, they might even help you. So it's wi be willing to make mistakes and be corrected and learn through your mistakes, you know. Um, and even if you do go to an organised course, you um, oftentimes they'll organize everything in the evenings for you as well you know they'll organize pub nights they'll organize trips they'll organize music sessions dancing poetry reading and walking, you, yeah. everything everything so you know you're going to be in a lot of different situations you're not just going to be in a classroom situation where a lot of people would just maybe associate irish with just sitting in the classroom and that's all you know you really get it you get it in every aspect and it's organized for you yeah and you can really activate it too because it's one thing to read your book and to listen to things and feel like mm -hmm. well, i understand that but can you do it <laughs> the only way to do it is by doing it by going and speaking and you can have those practices in your classes and your uh, lessons and so on but you know imagine being in, in the real world and obviously all of the girl types are really beautiful places too so that's that's mm -hmm. no harm yeah but you, when you go into the shop or the the bar or just chatting to people and it's 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 the real thing it's a real conversation so it's very good yeah. for your motivation i think too. yeah and i don't think you're you're going to have any really any negative you know feedback if if any mistakes are made or if you forget a word you know this is a it's as as neil said you know it's a safe space everyone's there you're not the only one in the world that has gone to that area to try and improve your language you know you're not the first and you're not the last so and um, just in my opinion, I find that people, you know, they feel really confident in their in their classroom, perhaps. But then when they get to the real world, they might forget everything. And that's OK as well. It's totally normal. It's totally yeah. normal. It happens everyone in any in any language, not just in Irish. And one 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 small thing is that there may be people who don't speak Irish back to you. Um, they may not be from the region. They mm -hmm. may not be very interested in the language. You know, it's possible that that can happen. So don't don't let that uh, put you out or anything. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there are plenty of other people there who do and want to speak Irish with you. Yeah, that's a good point, actually, Neil. Yeah, um, don't let anyone you know don't let experiences just in English taint your taint your overall experience of anything like that. Um, I was actually looking myself the other day at flights um, from Dublin to Donegal because. Um, I don't have car and if I do go home to visit I did want to get to Donegal I've never been um it's actually voted the nicest airport in I won't say the world but one of the nicest yeah, airports in the world, world. Yeah. could be yeah um but I don't know it's a bit expensive we'll see I might make it next year so good um on here Ella on son Neil I'll I'll okay. leave you try it
Yeah, so this is from uh, Edward in, uh, I think, Illinois, USA. And he asks, in your opinion, what part of the Irish language do you feel is the most critical to learn? Would you say the verbs or irregular verbs? So what do you think, Emma? Yeah, good question. Uh, for me, it depends on where you are. Um, where you are in your language learning. Um, if you're starting off, the most critical thing is, for me anyway, I think the spelling and then the pronunciation that goes with the spelling. Because when you start with that, you know, it it's plain sailing after that. A lot of people get tripped up at the start with the idea of the uh, how Irish is pronounced and they get they don't really pay attention to it and then a couple of months down the line they're still pronouncing their th as like th and you know you've made your you've you know so start doesn't mean to go on there so the most critical thing for me to start off with is obviously getting your spelling and your pronunciation you don't have to sound like an irish man or an irish woman that's you know grown up anywhere in ireland you know you just understand the way that the language works um after that, I was thinking, well, what's the next step? Well, the next step is obviously getting your basics of vocabulary and also then sentence building. Um, another thing that learners will soon find out is the sentence structure of Irish is much different to English. It's different to German. It's different to many languages. Um, the Celtic languages are VSO languages. So that is a verb subject object language, meaning that the verb is the first thing that comes in the sentence. So tame goody and shuppa is go I to the shop. Um, so understanding how to build a sentence, understanding that the verb comes first. And then you ask um, Edward, you know, is our verbs and irregular verbs important? I suppose, yeah. Um, understanding how to conjugate the verbs, maybe starting off with the present tense. What I usually do is I do present tense um, for a little while. And then when I have the present tense down and how to conjugate that, I'll move on to the past tense. And then I have those two. And then I'll make a move on to the future tense. Now, obviously, in between that, you need to be, you know, as anyone is learning languages, you need to learn your vocab, practicing, reading, listening, all of that. But um, yeah, I suppose irregular verbs, people people worry about irregular verbs. The nice thing about Irish is that it only has 11 irregular verbs. So that's kind of um, the icing on the cake or the silver lining of Irish. People might say, oh, my God, this is this is so difficult and that is so difficult. You know, it depends what people find difficult and what others don't. But you only have 11 irregular verbs to learn. Um, so any time that you're feeling, you know, anyway, stressed about learning, that learning anything about verbs remember there's only 11 irregulars and count your blessings there so um that would be my my way to go I'm, I was trying to think of what I would do or what I do with my students and the first thing I, I do is the sentence structure um understanding it and um, building some basic vocabulary so that I can talk about at least you know myself in the first person and then start worrying about maybe second and third person um you know he does, she does, you know, build it up. I like to say, I say it all the time, make it relevant to you. So start learning, you know, talking about yourself and your family and where you live. That's where you start off in a language um, and then build build it from there and it'll get easier um, as you go. Do you have anything, any I key? Any, what you yeah. said is fantastic and it depends on the stage and being, being targeted like that. Um, mm getting the spelling pronunciation at the beginning and then some basic conversation about who you are is a great place to start because that's what we all want to talk about. Um, and then later on, things like grammar will become more uh, important. But, um, you know, the question asks um, which part is the most critical. Really, in the end, all of it is critical. You know, we need the pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, um, all of these things, and you, you can't just have one of them or focus on one of them. So I think it's really good to practice in more than one way. You know, if some people use a, an app with gamified lessons, that might give you a bit of practice in one way, but you're probably not practicing speaking or conversation. Or if you're using a book and you're going through um, grammar tables and things like that, fantastic. But that's not helping your listening or, you know, so it, it's good to have a variety of things like that. Um, 
they'll all be necessary in the end, to be honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Depends where you are. So if you're a couple of years in, maybe start on your um looking at your tissue ginaduck, your genitive, and getting that right. That can that can cause confusion for people. I love that stuff, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still need to do the genitive and the plural say catch me. <laughs> After all these years, they still catch me out. Um so on, though. Yeah. we have another question from Paul Gallagher who lives in Galway, but of course he's from County Donegal originally with a name like Gallagher. Mm -hmm. And he is asking about how, how would I say in the Ulster Irish dialect, can I have a pint? Can I have a mug of tea or mug of coffee? And also asks about the phrase, the rest is history. So we'll deal with the simple ones first. Um, Ordering a a pint, a cup of tea or coffee, there's a couple of ways, really, but the most simple common way is just with bawaitlam. And you'll notice that I say bawaitlam and not bawaitlam or bawaitlam. How would you say it, Emma? Uh, bawalam. Yeah, bawaitlam. Bawalam, sometimes, depending on how I'm feeling. But, but <laughs> I should be saying bawalam, but bawalam, yeah. And uh, so in, in Ulster, when we say the word good, it, it's it's my, not ma. So... For that Ulster Irish, um, Paul, Bawaitlam, Bawaitlam. So Bawaitlam Pianta, Bawaitlam Kapante, no Mogate, Bawaitlam Kapan Cafe. Um, that's the simplest way to order a, a drink or something. And then the other one he asks about is the rest is history. That's a really interesting question because you have to start thinking, what, what on earth does that mean in English? The rest is history. And it's quite hard to translate because it's not, it's kind of, it's an idiom, you know, it's, it's almost a metaphor or an expression. It's, it's not very direct and clear, like I would like a cup of tea. So the rest is history. So I, I did a bit of digging and I found a version of it. Tasig madi awalye ken chrich a veirin scale. Tasig madi awalye ken chrich a veirin scale. So madi awalye, that is the dogs of the town in Ulster Irish. It would be Madri with an R in it in other dialects, I think. Um, but the dogs of the town know, Tasaku, Ken Chrich of scale. What ending was on the story? So, what happened in the end? So, the rest is history. Everybody knows what happened, is the meaning, really, I think. Tasig Madiwalye, Ken Chrich of scale. Have you ever heard that uh, phrase? I actually haven't, no, and I was looking, I looked it up myself, and, um, you know, Toysig Madri on on Valia or on Valia, King Kriach, Avir and Scale. It's a mouthful. It's a bit longer. Yeah, than the rest is history. You know, that's something Mm, that often people people end a book on or a movie and the rest is history. Well, if you were finishing (laughs) one in Irish, you have a mouthful. But I I think I prefer the one in Irish because it gives a lot more context to, you know, the rest is history, you know. I, everyone I and their. More, I think it's more visual, isn't it? Because you can imagine the dogs on the street. You, you Even can... the dogs knew what happened, yeah. you know. Yeah. And yeah, I I really like it. So say it one more time for everyone, um, and I'll even take it in and try and remember okay. it for next time. Ta sig madi uvalje ken chrich a vir in scale. Come on, doch. Excellent. Um. So the next question is from Roz in Leamington Spa in England. Um, She says, the different dialects of Gaelic have some quite diverse pronunciations of certain words. For example, ditch, or which I've heard is dwit or rit as well. Which is the most universal or useful one to go for that you will understand and be understood wherever you go? So which dialect, basically? What do you say, Emma? If I knew the answer, I'd be a rich woman because, you know, it's it's the golden it's the golden question. Um, we get this a lot, and it's a common one. And everybody, when they start, they want they want the best dialect. And of course, you want the best dialect. You want the one that will give you the least amount of trouble, and you want to be able to travel Ireland and be understood and understand throughout the whole island. But, you know, we're 
50 minutes into this live now and you know if we think about everything that we've discussed over the whole almost hour we've realized that you know i'm sure most of you realize that you can't there is none um we can't show bias really um i'm gonna show bias if someone asks me of course i'm going to say monster irish because I speak Munster Irish. I am proud to speak Munster Irish. You know, I love where I'm from. But also then I'll say, but also the north of Ireland is beautiful and the west of Ireland is beautiful. Maybe you should learn there because then you can spend time in this Gaeilte and that Gaeilte. So um, there is none. You will be understood, I think, overall, no matter what you learn. Um, there is a there is no standard dialect there uh, that is spoken there is a standardized uh, written Irish language, which is in some books, not all books. But um, even there, they will draw your attention to the different ways that you say, how are you, for example, you have Kunas Atatu, you have Cain Chuyiltu and Kajemar Atatu. So you already have three different ways in three different dialects. And I think that gets people a bit nervous when they start, because it actually so happens that how are you? And um, a couple of other ones, even Dutch and Rut and Jut and whatever way you want to say it, they're the first things that you learn when you start learning Irish. And already you're coming to these hurdles of, oh my God, there are so many different ways to say this in different dialects. It's actually a coincidence because once you get past those, there is not a huge difference, um, especially in the vocabulary that's used. Like uh, we had in the last idiom, madi, madi, mother, madi, and madri. Mm -hmm. um, you know, little things like that. Yes, but overall, I I often say to people, you know, don't get freaked out at the start because you have even three different ways to say how are you. If I go to the north and I meet Neil and I say kunas to, he's gonna know what I'm saying. You know, um, you. So my, my advice is when you are starting to learn or you're trying to pick them, in most books, um, they will draw attention to all three of them, you know, at least two of them, if not all three. So it's being aware, being aware at the start, but picking your own dialect. And I say again, you know, make it relevant to you. If you like a certain, if you've no link to the country at all, you know, you're not from the country, maybe you've never been there, maybe pick somewhere that you're interested in living or interested in spending time or visiting at least. Um, perhaps if you have family somewhere, if you have friends somewhere, maybe there, because if they're living in, in Kerry or somewhere in, in near Munster, you'll have maybe more of a chance to visit and also then spend time there and maybe practice. Vice, you know, with same goes for if you've gone on holidays, maybe to the north and you absolutely loved it, maybe try that. So it's kind of finding something that suits you. If you like how it sounds, if you prefer how Neil pronounces his stuff than I do, learn learn Ulster Irish, you know, no one, there is no superior one. Um, if you like the sound of how they speak in Connacht, if you love Gaelic Kosharaga, go learn Gaelic Kosharaga, you know, so you maybe have to do, if you've no preference off the bat, if you've no ties to the country, I'd say maybe try and go and listen. Maybe even use um, Neil's Nucht Waul and listen to the speakers speak nice and slowly in the di in the different dialects. You can see where they're from and see what sounds nice. Because they have, as we said, different melodies and different ways they're pronounced, different stress. And certain people prefer others to, you know, against others. So that would be my kind of advice. I have a question for you, Emma, because um, mm. I've already mentioned that um, I grew up in Tyrone. We we always looked to Donegal, just as, as everyone does in Ulster from County Down and Antrim across. Donegal mm -hmm. is where we look for our Irish. Um, so I struggled at first with Connacht and Munster Irish. And to me, those two, sometimes I struggle to tell the difference between them. And I think they're a little similar. How do you feel about the other dialects? Do you feel that Connacht and Ulster are similar or are they clearly di distinct? I find them a little bit similar. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> when I hear speakers now, maybe, yeah, because I don't have such a, a Kuramach, you know, not a not so much um, experience with listening to them. I, I suppose if I really listened, 
but uh, I'd be able to figure it out. But if I, I've found myself watching clips maybe on Mulchgale or on TG Cahar or even on something on Instagram, someone speaking Irish, mm-hmm. and I don't really, I just am kind of watching it without concentrating. I And it's not Munster. Um, I probably t- I probably have to watch it a couple of times. Okay, well... Um... I know that goes against what you what you say that Connacht and Munster are. Like, just, I do from, agree. Sure, from 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 my point of view and from your point of view, and I'm sure maybe Connacht people feel the same way. But I think I, I would echo what you said. Roz is writing to us from from England there, and I, I lived in London for 13 years myself. And part of that period, I was I was teaching Irish in London and meeting so many people um, who are second generation, even third generation Irish, who who might have a particular connection to Donegal or Cork or Galway. So it's lovely when you have a particular reason to choose a dialect that's meaningful, personal to you. But I know other people who don't even have any connections to Ireland, really, apart from friendships or or, or interest in the culture and history and so on. And some of them choose um, Ulster Irish just because, you know, they love visiting Belfast and so on. And... Um, whatever is meaningful for you um, is the one that you need to, to go for. Um, but the other side of it, again, as I said earlier, is we all need to understand everybody. So we're not going to block out the other dialects either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like we, we at Bite Size, we conduct our weekly meetings, uh, you know, and Siobhan speaks um, Connacht, little bit of monster mix but mostly connacht um myself and owen have monster and then neil now is there with Gaelga Ulla, and we get on just fine you know we we can understand each other just um great so you know we all but by the end of it you know by the end when you have your your basics um you will be understood and that's one thing that my students here even had a problem you know they were worried that they were going to Donegal and they had just been listening to me they got on fine and they came back with even more knowledge on the Irish language and they're now able to tell the difference even between things you know after two years of studying the language um, they're able to tell me, well, that's definitely Ulster Irish and that's definitely Munster Irish, you know. So there's no harm in mixing and learning bits of other other dialects as well to really broaden your ears. But it was starting off, just pick pick one that like you like, and if you don't like it, you can always change. <laughs> there's awesome. plenty of books. Go <laughs> <laughs> and um, Yeah. So on Kesh Kesh Ella and Son Neil, I maybe I leave you. Okay, um, so Fraser in Edinburgh asks, I've been enjoying a lot of traditional Irish music recently, both because it helps listen to and learn the language and because I like the folk melodies involved. In particular, in particular, I like Ban Fajin uh, and uh, Awakatima Hay Machine. Um, they have great lilting melodies. Do you have any recommendations or favourites for music like this? Um, I would just, I could mention a few songs. For sure. Um, Glantan Glas Gridor, the Green Valleys of Gridor is a beautiful song. Um, there is Mil Nala, Peggy Litcher Mower, Bwaji Nelami, a very famous one, another Donegal song. Um, Kasawa Tugain is a beautiful song too. There are so many. Some are Shan No songs, some are just songs in Irish, but there are so many. What would you say, Emma? Yeah. Um... I, I was trying to think of my favorite ones. And first I started thinking, well, where, where are the resources? Um, we actually have Ban Fodin as part of our Sing a Song in Irish course um, with uh, Bite Size. It's one of the songs uh, that you'd learn. You'd go through the um, vocabulary and then the pronunciation and the translation and all of that. So that's actually one. And I really like uh, Ban Fodin. But that mm. then reminded me of... Um, there's a lovely video with a great illustration from the cartoon saloon um, illustration or produ- production illustration um, animation or animation actually. studio. There you go. Yeah. The animation studio there um, who animated those beautiful uh, movies as well. Uh, the Song of the Sea, Our Own the Mara and um, 
Secret room more canonish yeah room more canonish and a couple more actually wolf walkers in the in the most oh, yeah. recent recently yeah so um they actually did this with tg Kahar and it's actually i found out it's a dvd but a lot of the videos are actually available on uh, youtube and it's on them on our own uh on tg Kahar and they do it's just even the song combined then with the great animation the story that goes with it is fabulous a friend of mine an american friend of mine actually drew my attention to it um because he sent me a song he's learning irish with me at the moment he lives here and um he showed me this song called kala and i'd never heard it before but it, it really reminded me of uh, Ban Fáadín and, you know, on Bacadil, like a really nice, upbeat, really feel-good song. And um, the video of that is really, really, really good. So um, I'll, I'll link that in um, the notes after this. But if you just look up Anna Manauron, even on YouTube, you'll find people have made playlists and uploaded the videos and everything. Or I'm sure the DVD is somewhere to be got, but... Um, YouTube is probably your best friend there. So I'd say uh, go for that. I was trying to think of any other songs, but you you kind of, you picked the ones that I was going to say. So um, yeah, go through the list of uh, of um, Anna Manauron on Chichi Kahar. Um, I need to watch some more myself. I want to go through them with my students. They're great. Um, yeah, so. And that, as Fraser says, you know, music is so easy to enjoy, isn't it? But it's great to follow whatever, interest you have with the language mm -hmm. because it's not so dry then it's not like learning grammar you're actually just pursuing your interest so if you're into sport or music or uh other other passions like that um folklore mythology things like that you can you can follow your interest with irish and then that will you won't feel like you're studying it'll just be enjoyable so that's a great way mm -hmm. to go lots of other exam um um suggestions in the chat too i think the home talk, keep them coming yeah and pop them in the in the comments afterwards um if anyone has any any suggestions it's always great because it's such a great way even just to enjoy the language even if you don't plan on becoming an expert in the language um you know learning a couple of songs it's always great and if you ever then travel to ireland and you're in a pub and someone pipes up and asks you for a song you have a couple up your sleeve um it's never any harm to have it and one thing we we did in london um before the pandemic we we set up an irish language choir and wow. that was really good yeah it was so I much fun that. of course the pandemic put yeah. in but I, I hope i've since left london i hope they go back to it um but we used to arrange the words, uh, said the words out phonetically as well for people. Because mm -hmm. there'd be some people with good Irish, some people with a little Irish, and some people with no Irish whatsoever. And they were all in, but there were the phonetics were there too. Nice and easy to read if you, if you don't mm -hmm. read Irish. And uh, one or two of the people who were in the choir, but also taking classes with me, were saying that they found that the words of the songs, the lyrics, were staying in their heads. So these examples were really fixing in and they found it was a really useful way to maybe remember some examples of the past tense or this and that. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. definitely a good way. Yeah, great way to enjoy. So yeah, keep all suggestions coming. Um, everyone in the chat there and in the comments. Um, yeah, so next one then. I shall read it out. This comes in from uh, Jola in Derry. I hope I'm pronouncing that. Maybe Yola, Jola. Um, uh, Jola's in Derry. And he says, I'm thinking about learning uh, the basics. I'm Polish and I'd love to take a week or two course in the Gaeiltoch together with my 12-year-old daughter. What Irish is taught in the schools of Derry? Well, Derry is in Ulster. Derry is next door to Donegal. So it's very much Ulster Irish. Really, mm -hmm. Donegal County, especially North Donegal, is, is the kind of hinterland of Derry City. And everybody in Derry City has one grandparent from County Donegal. So it's really closely connected. So absolutely Donegal Irish um, up in Derry. Perfect. Short and sweet. Mm. Lovely. And our last question there comes in from our uh, GROW member, Daniel. 
And Daniel has a nice one. So, D. Yves, Emma, August, uh, Neil. Let me just get the question up while I'm talking. Yeah, here we go. So, um, Kadeemar Toshiv. I heard recently that the word board is the phrase air on moored in the phrase air on moored is lenighted rather than eclipsed in the Ulster dialect, uh, in which air on moored would be the more common pronunciation. What accounts for this difference in mutation between the Ulster and Connacht and Munster dialects? Uh, is it that the preposition air causes lenition rather than eclipse, eclipse, eclipse in the Ulster dialect? Or is it that board has a different gender in the Ulster dialect than in the Connacht and Munster dialects? Are there many other cases of this kind of difference of mutation between the Ulster and the other dialects? Tosulagum govilshiv guma agusgar milamahagov asok for ober gahuntach or ober untach le bite size goilge. Gar milamahagot Daniel. So I would straight off the bat say, well, this is what I'm going to come first and then you can um, strike in because I know you'll have something to say, Neil. Uh, when you have, so where you have the preposition and the definite article in, um, as far as I know, the standard, correct me if I'm wrong, um, they have decided to take the Connacht Munster um, idea of air on plus aru. So air on moored, egg on moored, Asan moored, all of that. Now I learned that as a list of Eran Egon Asan, Eran Egon Asan Fween, uh, Rivon Agus in or I eh, Agus Quigon, I think was in there as well. Um, they were all eclipsed. So I checked out a book to double check, and it says that quite simply, wherever that lenition happens on a consonant in Munster or Connacht, it is lenited, so it gets a shavu in Ulster. So Aaron Mord would be Aaron Vord, but um, I don't think board would be used at all, would it? Well, and also, if we did use board, we wouldn't say Aaron Vord, it'd be Aaron Ward. Oh, there of course. you go. Yeah, of course. <laughs> How so could we, I forget? The, the dialect war is ongoing. Um, yeah, we don't really use the word board too much either. We say tabla, so er a tabla on the table. Um, but yeah, um, Daniel has a few sort of suggestions about is it because of gender? Is it because of just er? Um, no, it's not because of gender. It's not because of one preposition er. Um, it's generally the same for all prepositions, let's say. So eran, igan, asan, and so on. Um, generally, monster and connaught, uru. Er, an, mas, igan, mas. Um, and in Ulster, we use shevu, so igan was, eran was, and so on, uh, with the H going in. Um, the reason for that, I think I remember hearing something about that, that it may have come down from old cases that are not so distinct anymore, don't really feature anymore. So I think there, that may come from an old dative, an old accusative case, but just don't worry about that. As far as I know, in Ankaijan Ifugu, the official standard of the language, so the official rules, if you're being very, very um, uh, formal in your writing, if it's uh, and so on, they, 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 they call it Ankoris Larnach, the central system, when they use Uru, so Connacht and Munster, the central system, using mm -hmm. Uru. And then we have Ankoris Shevehe, so the Shevu system uh -huh. for Ulster Irish. Um, and Coris Larnach Central, you can tell that that is a bit more um, authoritative. And I think in it most is, isn't it? Um, legislation, it will have that Uru. So really, if you're putting a H there, if you're doing the Shevu, it shows you've got Ulster Irish. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it, really. It is technically accepted in the uh, official Kaijam mm -hmm. the standard, but if I'm doing some translation work myself, I would probably write the Uru in. Um, okay, interesting. government document or something like that. Um, mm. um, but when I'm speaking, never, ever, ever. Always the shaving. <laughs> yeah. I remember learning it in school and um, we were talking about it. And, you know, you're basically correct whatever you say. You know, Aaron Moss, Aaron Voss. But I think my teacher said, look, if you're writing in Munster, if you're doing all of the other rules in a Munster, in Munster or Connacht dialect, you know, any other kind of 
rules that pop up um even in the language that you use and then all of a sudden you throw a shavu in there randomly it doesn't really fit you know so you either you either use one rule or you use the other you know you you wouldn't say air on bus you wouldn't say air on bus and then uh or air on mus and then egg egg on Vord. I know you don't say Vord, but you get what I mean. You wouldn't mix the rules. You either just choose, you choose to use our rules or you choose to use your shavus. But also watch out because a couple of the prepositions do something different. Of course, um, we're talking about preposition and article. So it's at the, with the, and so on. Mm -hmm. But um, for uh, done, August, then, um, oh, yes. the, and from the, they normally take shavu and, um, and sa for in the, normally takes shavu everywhere but mm -hmm. i think in connacht after sa they use uru and that's one example where connacht is different to the the other two dialects so they might say sa mm. um sagar instead of sahar yeah you're right yeah no, but I think there's a couple of little tricky things there but for the most yeah. part that's the rule and that we have up in front of us mm -hmm. So pick one and stick with it, I think, is your is your easiest one. But when you see it um, or if you ever become, you know, a corrector, that was something I was doing a little bit of correction and I was marking certain things incorrect. And then I thought, no, wait, it has to be something has to be as um, everyone's writing this. And it actually turned out that it was just another dialect and I wasn't aware of it. So, yeah, pick one and stick with it um, is the easiest uh, way to go. But, yeah, it's just a difference with Ulster in specific. So a perfectly um, topical question, Daniel. Um, okay, so Toshe, I'd say we're coming to the end. Um, I see two questions in the chat that are kind of the same question. So um, I'll bring those up. Um, it was a little bit back there, hang on um so what is the greatest book each of you have read in helping you to learn the irish language now that's the greatest book i don't know um but the second question then would be uh, what book would you recommend for learning irish grammar so they're kind of to do with each other um neil i'll probably hand it over to you first so i have time to think um what well, do you think i have to be consistent because this is what i tell everybody i'm moving my laptop because it's there's a book currently sitting under my laptop Mm -hmm. And some of you may know it or have heard about it. It's, I think it's the best-selling book uh, for Irish language these days for self-study. But it's um, this one here, Gael Gagan's Tro. Um, I was just finding her copy. Never far away, folks. It's never far away. No, um, it's the Bible. Um, so it, the thing is, it's, it's great for self-study. It's great for beginners. And it shows you all of the dialects so at once. And there's lots of audio. It's got vocabulary, realistic context, and it's got grammar in there too. It's not a grammar only book, but it's got all that stuff in it. Um, and there, there's a, there's a follow on book from that, the red one, which is lower intermediate level. If you finish mm -hmm. the green one, um, there's a lot in them. And there's another book in that series as well, which is purple called Grammadach Ganstro, grammar without stress and bother. And that book is, definitely a grammar book but it is all in irish so all the explanations are in irish as well so it's not the the easiest one it's a bit more academic possibly so i definitely recommend starting with the green book and possibly the red book and the purple book is where you want to go after that i think any mm -hmm. other suggestions Anna? yeah i was trying to think um i have one or two other ones that i kind of use with gwelga guns throw uh colloquial irish is one that i quite like and um, it follows the same um kind of the same numbers of you know chapter chapter numbers as gwelga guns throw would be um so i would really recommend that one and i think um nancy stenson does a couple of good books as well oh yeah yeah. Nancy Stenson's Basic Irish. She has Basic Irish and Intermediate Irish. Yeah. 
um that's a really nicely set out i it's it's actually not so much the content for well it is of course but it's all it's a big thing for me to have something that's nice on the eyes as well you know that you can actually sit down and read and i find definitely gwail gagan's throw is really readable and it's friend it's a friendly book to open um you have really really nice you know it you know it's colors there's pictures you've you've um an audio um you've audio mp3s on available online that you can go with so that's a really uh, and it's actually available online as well as a as an ebook style um lower as well as a, as a physical book so yeah they would be my my recommendations i think there's always new ones popping into my head or that i discover um yeah so so who will shin shin um, if anyone else has books, we'd always say, um, can you write the name of the book? Yeah, so I just had it up there, Gwelga Gan Stro. I'll pop it up again, Gwelga Gan Stro. And um, Colloquial Irish. But what I will do is I'll put all of these in the blog post after um, this live. So this will be available then on the link in the description that you'll be able to go on and see all of the notes from what we talked about um, throughout this entire live stream. Um, I'm so happy to have learned a little bit more about Gwilg Ola Agus Marshinda, and I'm sure um, we'll see you back here soon with us, Neil. I know you're busy. Uh, Neil is busy behind the scenes um, doing great things for uh, Bite Size. So, um, keep your eyes peeled in the next couple of months and um yeah if you have any questions or comments or anything you know you can always leave them under this video or also on the blog post and we'll get back to you and um, we're always open for suggestions if anyone has extra information for us or comments or anything like that so Neil. Um, i'm very happy to be here to represent ulster irish in in the bite size team so that's that's good for us well, we'll talk to you all uh, on Visha Cooing. So next month uh, we'll be back again. So um, if you haven't already subscribed, do because then you will get a reminder of our next um, live stream. So good evening. Slán Slán.